everybody. Welcome. How are you guys doing? I'm doing fine. How about you? I'm Dr. Brian Jeanette. And Dr. Nicole Lindsay at Back in Balance. And uh, let us know how you're doing, where you're watching us from in the comments section. Um, let us know. We, we want to know where you're from, if you're a patient, not a patient. Uh, today we're going to talk about the power of posture and your brain. Posture is so important. It, it is so important that almost every single person that walks in here, the first thing that they say to us is, you know, I, I, you know, it, I get it, my posture is bad, I know I need to fix it. They, they, they all come in here and say the same thing that we need to fix it. But here's why. We're going to talk today about why this is important. It's probably, they probably say that because they were told that their whole life, you know, right. by their parents. Sit you know? up straight. Sit up straight. Don't slouch. But we want to start here with this simple test just to show you how important posture is. So stand up wherever you are right now, or if you're in a chair, sit up nice and straight in your chair. Stand up nice erect on your feet, shoulders back, and take a big, big, deep breath in and out. And out. What does that feel like? How does that breath feel going in? How does it feel going out? Are you able to expand your lungs fully? I know I was. You have to okay. expand your chest, expand your diaphragm, expand breathing through the belly. All, all of our breath, our lungs, our lungs expand. They expand out, they expand up, and they expand downward. And so are you able to use the breath through your belly? When your posture is erect. Now, part two of this test is to slouch, slump, whether you're seated in a chair or you're standing, roll your shoulders forward, let your chin tuck, hit your chest almost. Or just get back to what you were doing before yeah. and put your hands on the keyboard. And put your cell phone in front of you if you were just texting and scrolling. Now, take a big breath in again in this position. Ooh, that's much harder. Yeah. yeah, what does that feel like compared to the previous breath you took? Yeah. Much well, different. One common trend or pattern that we're seeing with, with patients, I, I see it all the time uh, with patients either in here on the street or you know whenever we were traveling airport when that was a thing. Um, people would be sitting down and scrolling and doing their thing and they'd be breathing and then I'd see them stop in the middle of it and go and then go back to what they were doing before. It's almost like they were holding their breath or forcing this uh, uh, lack of oxygen by doing this and then they got to a point where they had to stop, put their phone down and say, okay, okay I'm going to say, okay, coming up for air and now I'm going to go back down. Exactly. So this simple test shows you how very important your posture is for many things, for respiratory function um, alone. So if you have neck pain, upper back pain, headaches, and, and you're in this position because of what's happening with your posture, that's going to cause respiratory breathing disorders. And in fact, we are going to talk about this next month on our Facebook Live series, breathing pattern disorders and how that affects your life and how you can correct some of these breathing disorders. So make sure you tune in next month for that one. But poor posture can affect your breathing. Absolutely. So and, and actually, in fact, in the American Journal of Pain Management, they put out, put out a position statement of the effects of poor posture on health. And we're talking about um, spinal pain, we're talking about headaches, they're talking about mood, they're talking about blood pressure, they're talking about pulse, and then what we just talked about, lung capacity. Are your lungs able to be utilized at 100%? Yeah, not only is posture affecting your respiratory function, your breathing, but it's also affecting your smarts, kids listening to this, or parents. Um, there was a study that was done in New Zealand, the University of Auckland, New Zealand, and they studied the effects of upright posture on a group of young people, and then they researched them with the slouching posture. And what they found is that they were able to cope with the stressors of reading of their assignments so much better when they were sitting more erect. And not only were they able to manage and cope with their stress, but they had more self-confidence, a higher self-esteem. They had a better mood and less fear. Huge, 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 huge. Posture not only affects your physical capacity, your physiological capacity, 
but it also affects your mental and emotional capacity too. Yeah, and you know, you've probably heard this before, uh, text neck, text neck, it's a thing, it's a real thing. And it comes from being in this forward head position for hours and hours on end. Um, just the other day we were in a staff training and we were setting goals, personal goals, and um, one of our staff members' personal goal um, was less cell phone time, less device time, yeah. and, or that it should be, the goal should be that, mm -hmm. and um, she was commenting how her time, because Apple does send you a report on your device time. You'll, it, 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 it'll tell you your screen time, how much time you spend per day on average on your screen. And she commented what hers was it's scary. this week compared to last week. And, and, and I said, oh, well, you know, three hours for a day, that's a lot. When I thought my average number was high for the week, when it turns out that was my number for the day. So confession, um, that report I was reading wrong and turns out that I have text neck. Yeah. <laughs> so um, what is forward head posture and how do we get it? Well, um, the human I'll head. Let her go. I'll let her take this one. <laughs> the human head. It's like a bowling ball. Uh, do you know how much it weighs? The average head. So it's close to twelve to sixteen pounds. Yours might be because he's pretty smart. He's got a lot of brains in there. But average is probably more close to ten, 10 pounds. Ten. Yeah. And um, when you have normal, healthy posture, you should have a nice curve in your cervical spine, one in your thoracic spine going the opposite way, and then a, a lumbar curve that is similar to the cervical curve in your neck. So that bowling ball needs to be right planted on top of the head, on top of the spine. So when we're looking down all the time at the computer, at our devices, if we're sitting with poor posture, slumped over, we develop this forward head posture or tax neck. All the little bitty suboccipital muscles, the scalenes, the muscles in the front, even the SCMs, are going to get tight because they're working constantly. As you are in this position, these muscles are working, pulling you down in this position. When you constantly stay in this position, which, uh, I mean, if you look around, there's a lot of people that are walking and texting, they're walking and doing something on their bias, or like walking and talking, and their head's down in this position. When you're down in this position, even three inches or more forward, you're actually placing six times more force on these muscles, ligaments, and tendons that are in the back of your neck. It's not designed for that. I mean, you get your, you, you build a house, you get the inspector come in, and if it's not rated to, to withstand the load, they're gonna tell you to redo it because it's not safe. But yet, we do this all the time, put so, so, so much pressure on our neck, our, on our traps, on the suboccipital muscles that Dr. Nicole was talking about, that goes into the shoulder. And this plays, this plays a role into to everything. We talk about mood, mm -hmm. we talk about headaches, neck not pain. to mention neck pain, not to mention we, what we were just talking about with lung capacity. If I'm here, I'm squishing my lungs down and I can't get a deep breath. If I can't get a deep breath, if I don't have enough oxygen, well, what's that gonna do? I might be lightheaded. I might develop some sort of breathing difficulties. Combined with what we're doing now with wearing masks all the time, more restriction than that. So a lot of people say, I can't breathe in a mask, I can't breathe in a mask. Well, it turns out you might not have been able to breathe before you put the mask That's on. Right. That's right. So if you couldn't breathe before you had a mask, you put a mask on. You really can't breathe. You really now. can't breathe now. It's gonna really highlight a lot of deficiencies in your breathing patterns. Yes. So this forward head posture not only affects the upper back and neck, we can see low back pain as a result of this as well. So it is so important to work on bringing your devices up and correcting your postural problems. In our office, we look at your posture, we even take x-rays and look at your cervical spine because if you've been in this position for a long time, your curve in your neck can flatten and in some cases reverse, requiring some corrective care so that we can change that and help you get back to a healthy state so your breathing's not affected, your brain's not affected. Yeah, you're, you're, you're literally bent out of shape and you're, you're gonna consistently and constantly get bent out of shape, uh, emotionally and mentally, but not only that, physically you're bent out of shape. Yes, so exactly. There, there's a lot that goes on with that. Uh, one other thing that, that I wanted to touch on with that is that even in the Journal of American Geriatric Society, that your risk of dying from a pulmonary illness when you have this forward head posture is 200% more likely than if somebody had a normal posture. Wow. 
right? So we're talking, I mean, over the age of 60, over the age of 65, you're increasing your likelihood of having lung disease by 200%. You're also increasing your likelihood of having a cardiovascular disease by 240%. Wow. It's like, it's, it's crazy. And we see this all the time. We see it in the grocery store, right? So as, as we, as we are young and healthy, we're upright, all of a sudden gravity starts to take a hold. A decade, I'm right here. Another decade, I'm right here. Another decade, I'm right here. And all of a sudden, I'm seven years old and I'm right here. But then what do I have to do? I can't look up. So then I drop my knees and now I'm looking up. So I, I drop my knees forward and I'm doing one of these little walk things. Mm -hmm. You didn't get there overnight. Right. This happens in your 20s. Now, this is happening in our preteen years, 11 years old, 12 years old. We're starting these patterns a decade, two decades, three decades earlier than my parents' generation, than my grandparents' generation. Yes, yes. So fascinating, fascinating stuff. I want to go back to the brain because I really feel that the brain is, it just doesn't get the accolade. Attention and, it deserves. Yes. It's so neglected. And there's so much about it that we don't know. And I think that's why we often leave it out of the picture when it comes to healthcare because we just don't know. But the truth is we are learning more and more about it every day, especially our profession. And your posture plays into that because your body is constantly reading your environment all the time. It's taking in information through your senses. My skin's taking in information, uh, air temperature, humidity, smell. smell, when I touch things with my fingers, when I touch things with my feet, but we have, you know, we almost can't feel our feet anymore because of all this stuff, all the shoes and socks that we wear. Yes, yes, sight, um, what you see, what you feel, what you hear, what you taste, all of this, this is sensory information and movement. Movement, the way that you move is information that the brain takes. So what happens is you have this sensory input going into your body all the time. Every single thing that you see, touch, hear, do is brought into your, your body, into your brain. Your brain then takes that information and it has to do something with it. It has to integrate it, if you will, and turn it into something useful that the rest of your body can use, that your organs can use, your autonomic, autonomic nervous system, um, your your muscles, everything then turns into something else. And the most power per, powerful provider of this information is movement, is, is, is getting out there, exercising, standing up, proper posture. We have these little cells and receptors in our joints and our spine and our skin that tell us where we are in space, and these are called proprio receptors. And if we don't use those, we're not getting enough information into our spinal cord. We're not getting enough information up to our brain. And then on the flip side of that, our brain can't possibly send enough information down to the rest of our body. So it's not telling, us, it's not telling our body how to function properly. It's not telling our, our, our lungs how to breathe properly, our digestion to work properly. It's not even telling our joints how to move properly because we, we, we forget how to move. Yes, exactly. So the fact that you may have poor posture will affect your movement because if your shoulders are in this way that means your posture is distorted that means you have tight muscles on one side compared to the other well guess what that when you move your shoulder it's not going to move as it will on the other side the range of motion is going to be altered this is information that goes back to the brain and as dr brian just said is then utilized for other systems in your body. But it's getting bad information. It's getting misinformation. Static, yeah. dysfunctional information. And, and therefore... Your, your brain does the best that it can to interpret that and send it back. But it's gonna be just purely bad information. And what comes out, the output, is gonna be altered information. So instead of good digestion, proper breathing, muscles that are balanced and healthy, you may have fatigue, you may have digestion issues, you may have rotation in your pelvis now. You're gonna have a symptom because the information going in is faulty, so the information coming out. Right, let's, and, and let's switch gears and, and talk about even athletes, for example. The information that's going out is balance, is our ability to move on one leg, runners, right? 
running when we run we're on one leg at a time and it's going back to non-athletes let's talk about our older population with balance how many times do you hear your grandparents or your great uncles your great aunts say that they have balance problems that they're not as stable as they used to be well all that information is housed in the brain it starts at the very bottom of the feet comes all the way up into the spinal cord the spinal cord takes it all the way up to the brain and then sends it right back down well if we're not getting enough sensory input it's going to put out bad information. It's going to start with the back of your brain. In your brain stem, this little area called the cerebellum. And that's so, so, so important for balance. Yes, and it is, it is not, this is breaking news right here. It, it, it is not a normal thing as you age to lose balance. To lose balance. Yeah. That is a problem. I, 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 pro <laughs> I, I promise you it's not normal. No, that can be worked on, right? That tells us that there's a dysfunction, that there's an imbalance in your brain. And that is most definitely causing a health problem. Because here's the thing, your brain, the sole purpose of your brain is to monitor your movements and take that information and process it and give you health thereafter. That's the purpose of the brain. Your brain's right? not working, you're not gonna have good health. Yes, and as humans, as human beings, the most evolved, complex thing that we can do is stand upright, erect, and have good posture. That makes us very complex um, individuals, and that tells us our brain has evolved. Just the, like Dr. Nicole said, uh, on, on evolving to this, just the sheer fact of going from our hands and feet to standing up erect on our two hind legs develops so much more of our brain stem, develops so much more of our brain, which increases so much more of our brain matter, almost to the, to the point where now in the 21st century, that this brain matter, where we think, where our memories are stored, where our emotions are stored, where our, our higher conscious thoughts uh, uh, reside, Spending too much time in bad posture, spending too much time sitting, sedentary, sitting, no movement, sitting too much time uh, in front of a computer screen, TV screen, mm -hmm. cell phone, this actually wears away and distorts our brain. So instead of having a nice, thick, you know, big, plump brain, our brain actually gets atrophies. smaller. Atrophies. It atrophies. Strikes. We see this in alcoholics. Mm -hmm. We see this in other neurodegenerative cases. We see this in Alzheimer's. And then what we see it in is dementia, and they're actually calling this now digital dementia just by the sheer act of bad posture, looking at computer screens, mm -hmm. we're shrinking our brain. We're seeing it in children as well, which is frightening. It's starting at, like I said, it's starting as early as 13, 11, 12, 13 years old. Yes. So one of the things that we check in our office to check your cerebellum, your brain function, we put you on weight scales. Uh, you may have been to a chiropractor and got on the scales and thought, this is kind of silly. Why, why are you weighing me this way, weighing half my body? That is not what we're doing. We're checking to see how your cerebellum is actually functioning. Mm -hmm. Because your cerebellum controls your balance and coordination. So when your cerebellum is off and dysfunctional, not firing right, you may have a, a, a swayed pattern with your gait. Uh, you may be carrying more weight off to one side because of that balance issue. Uh, I'm exaggerating, you may not look like this. It may be subtle, but that's something that we can actually measure. It's, it, it, it's a very cool and very simple tool to check your balance. And, so, and a lot of times it blows people away when we tell them like, actually we're checking your balance, we're checking how your cerebellum is functioning. We put more weight on one side versus weight on the other side and say, oh my gosh, I'm always tripping on this foot. This foot always feels heavier. Well, it's not actually you know, your legs or your hips in most cases. It's something coming from your brain, which it's not something coming from your brain because every single thing comes from your brain. Exactly. And another test that you can do yourself at home is the one leg standing test. And this is very simple. Basically, just safety first. I'm gonna safety make first sure so I don't, don't fall, fall is uh, you can't see my feet, but stand on one leg, eyes open. And the goal is to do this for 30 seconds. And what you want to look for is, am I doing this the whole time? Am I tapping the floor? Because that does not count. That means that your posture is not stable and that your cerebellum is off. The second part of that is doing the same thing, but with your eyes closed. 
because this will then tell us another part of the story. Right. This goes back to those proprioceptors that I was talking about, where you are in space. If you're, th think of it this way, you're in your bedroom, lights are, it's completely dark, it's midnight, you have those blackout curtains on, and you hold your hand up in front of your face. It's completely dark, you can't see your hand, but your mind and your body still knows that your hand is in front of your face. This is the exact same thing that we're doing right here with your eyes closed. Do you know where you are in space? Are you able to have balance? Are you able, is your brain able to tell your body that, hey, you can actually stand on one leg and be safe and stable? Why? Because when we walk, we're on one leg. When we run, we're on one leg. When we go up and down the stairs, we're on one leg. Um, when we get in and out of the bathtub, we're on one leg. When we step, I mean, I can go on and on and yeah. on. We spend, our, we spend most of our life on one leg in some capacity or the other. It's when we start to lose the ability to have balance, to have good brain-body connection, that we have injuries, that we have, for the reason that we need lifeline, like the, you know, I fall on and can't get up. Yeah. You know, God forbid, you know, breaks their hip, has a, has a fall, breaks their arm, um, and then even worse, a lot of people have head injuries from this. And it's as simple as going back and fixing your balance. Exactly, so posture ties into this because if you are looking at your posture, what you should see when you're standing face on like we are with you now is you should see your shoulders nice and level. You should see your hips if you have a belt on or you can look at the top of your pant line. They should, that should be level. Your head, your nose should be directly in the center of your body all the way down. Right. When we turn to the side, we want, I'm gonna your hair. We want the ear to be directly over the shoulder which is directly over the hip, directly over the knee, directly over the ankle. So we want this. We want one straight line. A lot of times when we have forward head posture, what we see is that ear come forward over the shoulders and then the shoulders round forward. And we say stand up straight. And all people do is they do this. They look like, like a chicken neck, you know? And then that just puts more strain on their neck. Yes. So if you simply do that check and look at your posture uh, every day and you see any kind of distortion, and what that basically is telling you and telling us is that there's a dysfunction in your brain that's causing that. And we have to find the source so that in order to correct it and fix it, we can address the issue and correct your posture and any kind of health problem that this is creating. Absolutely. So that is it in a nutshell. If you're a patient and you want us to give you a more thorough check on your next visit, you want us to check your cerebellum, uh, to see how balanced your brain is or is not, uh, let us know. We'll be happy to do that. Awesome. And stay tuned for our series on scoliosis and brain development, how your brain can affect your spine and actually create curvatures and scoliosis. Yes. Thank you so much for wa watching. We hope you appreciate this information, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.